The final fighters of Laodicea, whom God is using, is churches. Independent, fundamental, Bible-believing, King James dispensational churches. They're the last stand. Because you might say, why is that, Pastor? Because there is one key thing that Satan is aiming for more than any other thing. You can avoid, uh, you can avoid the, the problems with, with your food and the systems of the government and the brainwashing ideals of your school, but that's not the key thing. You can avoid all these evils from Satan and still burn in hell for all eternity and Satan has your soul. So there is something, I mean, trust me, I have members in this church who know a lot of conspiracies, probably than some of you do, and they're lost in their sins and they're burning in hell. So there is one thing that is so important, and that's the gospel. That's what contributes to the New World Order system of the Antichrist. Why does he pr do the brainwashing in the schools to begin with? It's so that they can avoid the gospel eventually, right? Isn't that what's going on? That's why a lot of so-called Christians who are uh, likely false converts when they don't come to church anymore, they got brainwashed by the schools. They were probably never saved to begin with. Now, there's a good chance, don't get me wrong, that if they sincerely, with the repentant and believing heart, receive Christ for their salvation, they just got brainwashed by the school. So that's very possible. Think about it. Why does Satan have to set up elite systems taking over businesses, banks, and Hollywood to begin with? They have to do that so that they can control the way we live our lives. And by controlling how we live our lives, they can weaken the power of God's gospel affecting churches and the preaching at the Great Awakening revivals that influence people. You know what's affecting the unconscious minds of people nowadays is the machine system of the elites, not the preaching of the Word of God. The preaching of the Word of God, because it was so powerful, and it was just a matter of fact, everyone had a King James Bible in their hand, not a revised version. That's what affected their unconscious everyday living. See? So this is the key right here, is the gospel. So if you're looking at things online to attack the devil's system, you're looking at a wrong place. You better attend a Bible-believing church. It's the gospel. Look at this verse right here. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, the Antichrist, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Look at verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the what? Truth. Truth. Now, you notice these people call themselves truthers, right? You're not a truther if you avoid the Bible. If your final authority, if you're not living by the Bible, you're not a truther. What is truth? That they might be what? Saved. See, it's the gospel here. Now look at verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the what? truth that's what truth is is salvation if you know more if you're doing if you're spending so much time on conspiracies and online and your own self research and then i were to ask you when's the last time you led a soul to salvation you're in the wrong focus why do you think we stress so much attending church that way you can get involved out there to minister to souls out there you can tell souls to avoid uh how the government is running and ruining our systems, television, media, and schools. But look, that's not going to save their soul. You know what's going to save their soul? If you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you would go to heaven? You witness to them. That's what you need to do. So that's what Satan's aim is. Now, this is very interesting. If you were to look at Satan's one world religion, if he's going to bring this one world religion, there's going to be a commonality. You know what that commonality is in his one world religion? Look up Buddhism. Look up the three top religions of the world. Uh, excuse me, not government, religion. Look at the three top religions in the world. Catholicism, Islam, and Judaism. Look at all the denominations and the cults that came out. Jehovah Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists, Church of Christ, Mormonism, Masonry. Every single one religion believes in this. 
They believe for their salvation is by works. Look at every Eastern religion too. Buddhism, Hinduism, Shintoism. They all believe in works for salvation. That's what you're going to find out. That's the commonality. Now, let me tell you something else. This is Satan's great deception. In order for people to be confused in this idea of works, he pretends that this is also known as faith for your salvation. You know what's going on? The Catholic Church and, uh, and other cults, they are now professing, we are not saved by works, we're saved by faith. Wait a minute, then why are you doing all these sacraments, Catholic Church? Oh, because if you have genuine faith, you will do these works. That's what Jehovah's Witnesses are teaching. Isn't this, oh, wait a minute, deja vu here. Is, doesn't this sound like a teaching promoted by Calvinists called Lordship Salvation? Isn't this interesting? Isn't this very interesting where this is similar to Lordship Salvation, to anti-dispensationalism? What is anti-dispensationalism, Pastor? So here's the idea. This is the reason why... God is using Bible-believing churches because of this teaching of dispensationalism. Here's the idea. Dispensationalism, what it teaches is this. Because there are verses in the Bible that seem to show you can lose your salvation, that show that you do not have genuine faith because we don't see your works or your fruits, uh, you have to do works with your faith, and they, always, they all love to use James 2 on that one. They fail to rightly divide those verses to the right group of people and the right time period. See, Bible-believing dispensationalists, we can solve these problems with these verses by dividing those verses to a different group of people, different time period. And what you're going to find out is that's the case. As a matter of fact, how are you going to solve verses where Paul's epistles show faith not by works, but then James says it's not faith only, you have works. Simple, we rightly divide the verses. Paul's verses to the Christian church, whereas James' verse will apply to what you're going to notice at James 1.1 1, 1 and James 5.3, Jews in the tribulation. See, there's your simple answer. That's why Jews, they had a work system of a law during the Old Testament that Christians today don't go by. Why did Paul say the Sabbath, the ordinances are gone? Because rightly dividing that to today. But in the Old Testament, God said you have to observe it. Where's the simple answer? You divide that verse to the Old Testament, not to the Christian church. You notice that nearly every religion out there, and even unbeliever, are taking verses from the Bible and wrongly applying it to themselves when they apply to a different time period, different group of people. Here's the commonality of Lordship Salvation. If you really have genuine faith, then your works will show. But that's what those false religions teach. Anti-dispensationalists, they don't like the idea where we teach that salvation was different from the Old Testament compared to the New Testament. We have to rightly divide the verses. So they insist this. No, they were all saved by the same faith. Well, what about those works that the Old Testament did? Oh, uh, if they had true faith, then these uh, works will show right here. And you're saying that's the same faith as Christians then? You're trying to make the same salvation by faith toward Christians? Look at this. What is this contributing right here? This is contributing this system. Let, let me read some passages for you, okay, about these different religions. Shall I read some for you? Let's see how the mighty have fallen. And if you doubt me on this, let me quote you some famous Christian preachers and then let me compare that with some false religions here. Question, why does the Roman Catholic Church teach the doctrine of works righteousness, that through good works one can earn salvation? Answer, the Catholic Church has never taught such a doctrine. Liar, of course not. Of course they did talk, taught about works for salvation. You know what they're saying right here? Listen to this. Scripture and says that it is only by God's grace, completely unmerited by works that one is saved. You don't teach that Catholic church. 
You know how they justify this? The church teaches that it's God's grace from beginning to end which justifies, sanctifies, and saves us. Notice that Paul's words presuppose that the faithful Christian is not just desiring to be righteous, but is actively working toward it. Look at that wording right there. The Catholic Church is teaching, we're not saying that you're saved by works, but if you're a genuinely saved Christian, you will be working. If you have this genuine faith, genuine salvation, you will be working. Look at that. Seventh-day Adventist, quote, No one could be good enough to demand salvation, but that doesn't matter because God is giving it to us anyway for free. Really? That's what Seventh-day Adventists teach. Salvation is free. There's no way you can earn or work for it. Listen now. Doesn't that mean that you have to be good to be saved? In fact, it's rather the opposite. Striving to be good is one of the effects of knowing that you're saved. See that? If you really have the salvation, you would be doing this good works. God's Spirit coming into a person's life, see, if you have this salvation of God coming in your life, inevitably, inevitably produces the fruit of a good character. We may never become quite perfect, but our lives will trend in the direction. Look at that. But how can you tell the difference within this one world religion system? Jehovah's Witnesses, we do not earn salvation by doing these things, for no human could ever do enough to merit such an astounding blessing. Look at that. See, we don't teach works for salvation, says the Jehovah Witness. But if we fail to demonstrate our love and obedience, see, if you fail to demonstrate your love and your obedience in your life, see, doing these works, by doing the things that the Bible says God and Christ want us to do, See, doing works. Without works to demonstrate our faith, that's very interesting. That's what anti-dispensational sal uh, anti dispensational salvationists will say, that the Old Testament, you know, they had the same faith like we are. The works were just demonstrating their faith. You see this wording? Without works to demonstrate our faith, our claim to follow Jesus will fall far short. For the Bible clearly states, faith, if it does not have works, is dead in itself. Now, tell me the difference with those quotations with these famous preachers. John MacArthur. Salvation isn't the result of an intellectual exercise. It comes from a life lived in obedience. Isn't that what the Jehovah Witness said? Demonstrate our obedience? lived in obedience and service to Christ as revealed in the scripture. It's the fruit of actions. Remember, that's what the Catholic Church said, right, about the actions? Not intentions. There's no room for passive spectators. Words without actions are empty and futile. The life we live, not the words we speak, speak determines our eternal destiny. Here's Paul Washer. Quote, but if you profess to have gone through the narrow gate, and yet you live in the broad way, just like all the other people who are carnal and wicked, the Bible wants you to know that you should be terribly, terribly afraid. You know not God. Quote, you were saved because you repented of your sins and you believed. And not only did you that in the past, you continue to do it even until now. Now spend, listen to this, now spend the rest of your life repenting of your sins and believing in me. Conversion is not like a flu shot. Oh, I did that. I repented. I believed. The question is, my friend, are you continuing to repent of sin? Are you continuing to believe? No, no. If you do not have works, you're going to hell. So look at that. That's a problem right there. You see this doctrine? Oh, we believe salvation by faith alone, not by works. So we're different from those cults, the Catholic Church. No, you're all, all roads lead to Rome. That's right. All roads lead to Rome. 
you know how you can distinguish the right kind of church real fast? Ask them if they believe that, do you believe that in those verses like James 2 and the Old Testament that salvation was different for them compared to us in the church? They're all going to say, no, they were all saved by the same faith. Boom. You caught them. That's what these cults are doing right now, right? That's how you catch them. And trust me, you'll find out real fast. And guess what? Independent fundamental Baptist church are, are guilty of teaching against dispensational salvations. They're falling into apostasy too. Really, pastors, even those churches? Yeah. Why is that, pastor? Because the Bible demands apostasy. It doesn't matter even if you're the right kind of church. In that movement, there's going to be a lot of churches who will apostatize as well. See? Okay. Uh, here's another one. Ray Comfort. Look at the warning of Scripture. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. The Scriptures also say, He that covers his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. So notice right here that Ray Comfort, he also demands right here that if I see in your life right here that you're sinning, then you're not genuinely saved. He's quoting these verses here. Jesus said that there was joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. If there is no repentance, there is no joy because there is no salvation. But he disguises this with repentance. You notice that? So here's the thing. Do we deny repentance? No. We're not condoning every pedophile out there. You know, they can just repeat a prayer, go to heaven. But here's the idea. They overlook this notion that in your life, you live in a battle of flesh and spirit. And you are capable of yielding into the lust of your flesh. And trust me, it don't stop in a limitation line where God says, no, if you go beyond this, you're not genuinely saved if you're really that bad. No, my friend, you yield into sin, it will lead you further down a road than you could have thought. That's why it is so important you live your life clean for Jesus Christ. And that is separated from salvation. Because all of that living clean is works in your fellowship with Jesus Christ. Salvation is not by works. It is only by the work of Jesus Christ. Once you are saved, not by your works, but by the work of Jesus Christ, you're done in your salvation. Salvation is done. But your fellowship which has nothing to do with salvation. Your fellowship is a separate issue where you constantly have to work and stay on guard. And they confuse fellowship with salvation. They mingle the two together. That's why they think you have to keep living clean and living for Jesus Christ to prove you're really saved. Here's David Cloud. No salvation is evidenced by perseverance. Well, that sounds like Calvinist to me the perseverance of the saints in Tulip. According to these scriptures, the one who is truly born again will persevere in Christ. Or it could be better stated that Christ will persevere in him. No saving faith always produces works. Look at this. Look at this. One world religion. One world religion. Here's James White. In James 2, when he talks about people who say they profess faith, but there's no corresponding reality in their life. See that? If there's no re realistic change in their life after their faith. If Jesus is Lord, then there needs to be resulting activity. Isn't that what the Catholic Church said? That activity, that act? Doing the will of my Father who is in heaven. That's Satan's one world religion. That's a conspiracy that you're not paying attention to. So what do you need to do? Get off the internet. Get involved in a Bible-believing church that believes in dispensationalism. Trust me, if you ask them, so the verses in James 2, do you believe that's a different salvation that's applied to a different timeline, not to us today? Or tell them, do you believe that salvation in the New Testament is the same compared to Old Testament? Just simply ask them that. Trust me, you're going to find out real quick, wow, there's so many wrong churches. That's how you filter real fast. Trust me. Okay, that's how you find out real fast.